Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the CBL X's and O's podcast. Today, we're sitting down to review what was round three in the Gippsland Conference, and I've got Reese Hamriding joining me again today. Welcome, Reese. Hey, Matt. How you doing? Going well, mate. It was a great uh, round of basketball in Gippsland over the weekend. Now, let's start with the men, and let's start down uh, at Lake Centrance, who... Couldn't defend their home court against the Moe Meteors going down by 30 and Austin Shelley shooting another 30 points again. Yeah, uh, looked like from the looks of it, um, you know, that it was a easy game for Moe in the end. They opened up the first quarter 33 to 11. Um, you know, being 20 points down in the first quarter is probably not ideal for any team situation, but um, obviously uh, Austin Shelley was making pretty much uh, Lake's light work and and that way on his way to 30 points, um, you know, supported by uh, Rowan Densmick with uh, 19 um, and they had even scoring across the rest of them too. So, um, but yeah, for, for Lakes, not, not their night, um, you know, down there at the, at the, you know, youth and rec center. Um, but, you know, for, for Lakes, they had a few guys that were tailing some points as well with uh, Jacob Winnen uh, with 15 and uh, Chris Fields uh, with 13. Um, but yeah, unlucky for the late, uh, for the Pellies there. And, uh, but no, another good win for Maui. And Cherelgan traveled down the road to Mafra in what was, uh, you know, a middle of the road battle. And it's, uh, it was the Eagles that came out on top. Yeah, grand final rematch, um, you know, for them um, on this side of the things, Mafra, um, you know, got the best um, of the Trail and T-Birds men. Um, you know, Elliot Hunt comes in and, you know, out of nowhere, no one was really knowing if he was coming back or not. And he came in and stamped his authority straight away, going on to 30 points, um, you know, heavily supported by, um, you know, Sam Whelan as well with uh, 26, um, and then they had three other guys in double digits. So makes it really hard when you got five guys, you know, hitting 10, 15, 20-plus points, um, you know, and five of them just makes it harder. But, you know, credit to the T-Bird men. Um, you know, Ben Waller came in, um, you know, they were calling for help as they had a lot of unavail- unavailability. Um, called up a few youngsters, and Ben Waller was available. He's just coming off a fresh... Um, Australian representative um, tournament with uh, the Oceana squad, um, you know, and won a gold medal there, but he led the the T-Birds with 24 points um, with Ben Barlow and Cody Tibbles sharing 22 apiece as well. Um, seemed like a bit of a offensive onslaught and it was just going to be a matter of who could break away um, in that second half. And, and Packenham uh, welcomed Bullwell into Cardinia life uh, again on Saturday night and, uh, Dylan Jenkins top scored for the for the Warriors with twenty three, and you know Canavan's still there scoring a couple of points, but nowhere near what he has uh, shown in previous seasons. Yep, uh, Packenham came in, and you know it was a a very tightly contested game um, for the first half of it, um, and then Packenham just went an absolute roll in that third quarter, outscoring you know Paul Morwell thirty three to twelve. Um, in that uh, third term, but on the back of that in the fourth quarter, Morwell tried to do the literally the impossible, I guess, in, in basketball's eyes, which is, you know, coming back down from such a big margin. You know, they outscored Packenham 25-7 to seven in that fourth quarter. So, um, you know, credit to Morwell Magic just uh, left it a little bit too late in that, but you know, for Packenham, um, Dylan Jackson um, had 23 points. He had a really decent game. And uh, Kelvin Austin uh, followed closely with 16. But again, they had three other players in double digits um, in scoring. Um, and then you had Jordan Canavan with 15. Uh, Ashton Mc, uh, McAllen, again, in that scoring top two list uh, with 13. Um, so it just wasn't uh, the Magic's night. And the Young South Sonics team travelled down to Warrigal to take on the Warriors and Harper Fox, uh, sorry, Harper Fraser shooting 26 points. Still couldn't get the Sonics over the line. They went down by about 28 in the end. Yeah. Uh, look, positive signs to sale. Um, you know, they're getting there. They're just finding that uh, continuity and, and everything like that between themselves. They got a 
a lot of yeah you know, they had a full list there uh you know for Saturday night and which is something they've been unable to really kind of get for the last couple of seasons so it's really good to see that um you know Harper Fraser the youngster um that's coming through he had a really decent game like you said with 26 and you know, followed closely by another youngster with uh Zach Bolsberg uh with 12 um but look the Warriors are you know really really getting a good roll on right now um, Jordan Duke is continuing his strong performance uh, so far this season with 26, followed closely with uh, Murray Myers with 14. Um, so just uh, I think uh, the veteran presence in the Warrigal side just uh, prevailed in that battle against the the young Sale side. And Mo, we were travelling home from Lakes Entrance on the Sunday and pulled into Mafra to play their second game of the weekend and were able to walk away with another overtime victory. Well, it's fair to say that Moe men are the closers of the competition so far. Um, you know, their second bout again in overtime. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, Whitaker back uh, at the Moe at the helm there, he's probably got all these grey hairs trying to get through these games uh, comfortably rather than going in overtime. But uh, no Austin Shelley that game, uh, um, you know, reasons unknown, um, but, you know, didn't disappoint at all in terms of his absence. Rowan Densmith came out and smacked 31 points um, to help, you know, fill that shoes of that scoring presence, um, you know, followed closely with Stephen O'Brien with 23 points. But, you know, you also had Thomas Borbury with 21 and, Ben Van Dyke with 18 and closely with Wiz with 14. So, you know, really balanced scoring between that, you know, those individuals there. Um, but, you know, I think it was a coin flip. And in the end, you know, the go on overtime, you just don't know what's going to happen. Some teams get momentum, get a run, and Moe obviously did that. But look, with Mafra, you know, they came in and nearly had it. Um, you know, but look, uh, for for the Eagles, they had Marcus Cope with 23, Sam Whelan with 23, and Elliot Hunt with 20, and then a few others in double digits as well. So it was a, definitely a high-scoring affair, um, and it was 106 to 109, you know, 40 minutes of basketball was pretty pretty up there. So, but uh, well done to the Moe men there. They got it done. And Pakenham travelled across to Southern Peninsula to take on the Sharks, and were able to notch up their second week, sec, second win for the weekend. Yeah, really good win for the Pakenham Warriors, man. Um, you know, finished off the the weekend on a high. Um, you know, always uh, you know, it's a you know not so much of a drive for them, I guess. Um, down at Dramana. Um, but you know, for anyone else, everyone knows what it's like going down that way. You just don't know what you're in for sometimes. And but yeah, look, uh, Luke Rowry again. Um, stepping in and really providing that punch with 31 points, uh, followed closely with uh, Ben Gaze, um, with a quiet 14 from what we're used to from Mr Gaze. Um, but over at the, the Sharks, you had Corey Hastings make his debut for, for the first game this season. He had a, a, a nice 19 and followed closely with uh, Jake Wilson with 16. Um, so unlucky for the Sharks there, but a really good weekend for the Packham Warriors. And we, we take a look at the ladder uh, for Gippsland men after round three. And Montag, you had the weekend off, but they're still able to hold strong on top of the ladder. 2-0 and record, followed closely by Maui, who have played half their games already, and they sit 5-0. and So looking forward to the clash between Montag and Maui later in the season when we really find out which team is going to... Uh, potentially have their first loss, or they might have already had a loss throughout the season, but it would be interesting to see who's going to win that one. Mafra and Warrigal round out the top four, both with a 3-1 and one record, and then closely followed by Cherelgan with a 3-2 and two record. Pakenham and Curranborough hold that seventh and eighth spot um, with 2-2 two and two records, and then we've you know, got Sale, Moore, Lakes Entrance, and Southern Penn rounding out the ladder. So there's still we're still not seeing, I guess, the, the full ladder, I get, uh, because we've still got teams who have played random amounts of games. So it'll be good to see one thing. You hit the court next week and, you know, probably I think they notch up another two games. So we'll then start to see uh, the ladder evolve. And, you know, we've still got some really good t- uh, games to come between top place teams currently. 
Absolutely. You know, um, you know, the the good thing about this, you know, with CBL is 10 games, right? You know, uh, there's been two teams that have played half their games already, which is, you know, Moe and Trelgan. Um, and, you know, they just need to start solidifying their next, uh, you know, couple of games and getting those Ws to really stay in that top four. Because from the looks of it, you know, it's it's a race between three and four at the moment. You know, I think, um, you know, Moe is going to be quite up there. I think they're going to look to notch that number one spot. Um, you know, but again, depending on how one faggy travels, you know, they could be potentially that number two seed. But yeah, it's going to start getting real interesting. And, you know, for some, you know, Morwell Lakes and Southern Penn looking for their first win. So who knows? We might be in for a treat with some upsets. It'd be nice to see some upsets with the uh, bottom table teams beating some mid range slash top range teams. So, Let's have a look at the women's now and Maui travelled down to Lake's entrance and uh, stamped the authority on the competition to show that they're here to compete with a, a solid 60-point win over the Lake's entrance Pelicans. Yeah, uh, definitely a game that the, the Pelicans women want to forget very quickly. Um, probably wasn't the best uh, performance they've put up so far this season. Um, and, yeah, credit to the, the Maui um, women. They're, they're really getting some really traction going with how their team's performing and everything like that. You know, just looking at the scores, they dominated the whole game um, against Pelicans. Um, Tani Hodgins, 30 points. She's becoming more and more of a uh, threat um, as the weeks go by. Really um, a key emphasis with teams now looking ahead, um, you know, and followed closely with uh, Brooke Hunter, but they had very balancing scoring across everyone else in their squad for that game. And then for the Pelicans, we had Abby Spurrell, I do apologise, uh, with 16, and then Chloe Watson with eight. And Mafra hosted Terrelgan and couldn't defend their home court with obviously Samantha Labros of the Terrelgan T-Bird shooting 28, obviously causing uh, a bit of a headache for the Eagles. Yes, um, Sammy Labros does Sammy Labros things. Um, you know, really against no, another solid MVP type performance with 28 points leading, um, you know, Terrell and T Birds over the line. Um, followed closely with Jordan Pyle. She's starting to get her feet going. She's going to be an interesting watch the back half of the season, I think. Um, you know, but that again, you know, balancing scoring from the T-Birds there with multiple players with five, six, seven, eight, you know, nearly 10 plus points across their spread. But Mafra Eagles win, don't count them out. You know, they're, they're there. They're, they're very much there. Um, They just uh need to find their ways in closing out those games. And, you know, I think that will be a legitimate threat come the business end of the season. But Paige Brittle, solid as always. She's been really solid the last couple of weeks. Uh, 25 points, and then uh, Sienna Wyden, uh, wind. I uh, do apologise if I butcher that, uh, with 14. Um, you know, she's come back in. She was a, a force last season, um, really, really competitive and fierce. Um, yeah, look, don't count out the, the Eagles there. They're, they're coming. They're coming. And Packenham were able to make it two from two Saturday night with the women starting the night off by winning against Morwell. But, you know, you look at Emily Skulders there shooting 20 points, just wasn't enough to get more all over the line in the seven-point loss. Yeah, uh, just wasn't the Magic's night, unfortunately. Um, started off really well. Um, it just unfortunately didn't transpire that way um, for him. But um, Emily Skulders, uh 20 points, really solid. Um, outing again, um, followed closely with Abby Noblet with 13. Um, but over at the Packard and Warriors women, again, Beth Quarter um, with another 20-point game performance of 21 and then Hayley Letts uh, following closely with 11. But a really uh, good win for the Packard and Warriors women there. They're, they're on a roll, so they're, they're looking to keep that going. And Warrigal were able to notch their second win of the season, getting over the line against the South Sonics by nine points and... Beck Orland shooting 26 is continuing to carry the Warriors. Yeah, uh, definitely a result they were looking for after their you know previous round, um, having two losses. Um, yeah, definitely good to be back in the winners' books, no doubt. Um, very up and down game though, from the looks of it. Um, looking at the box scores here, um, you know, so you know, 
got him in the first quarter by seven, then Warrigal got him by 14 in the second. And it just looked like it went back and forth from there and Warrigal just pulled out in the, the last quarter there and really um solidified that win. But Beck Owen, she's having a great season so far, being a, a catalyst uh, for um for the Warrigal Warriors there, 26, followed closely with Isabella McEarren, uh with 12. Um, but yeah, for the Sonics... Uh, Grace Larkins with 15, um, followed closely with Ali Beal with nine, um, as well as uh, Dish Centro with nine as well. So really positive signs for the Sale women there. Um, they're just finding their feet at the moment. And Sunday, Mafra were able to turn around their result from Saturday night and defend their home court against the Moe Meteors. And Paige Biddle, you know, rocked up again and shot another 22 points to help the Eagles get over the line. Look, like I said, Mafra women are there. They are very much there. They're just uh, when they can find these games where they can close it out. You know that they, they're they're dangerous. You know, and a big win over Maui. Um, you know, definitely uh, wasn't uh, picked uh, that I picked last week. I didn't pick them to get over the line, um, but they certainly did. Um, and you know, Paige Riddle backing up another great performance of twenty two, and um, Sienna Wine with. Uh, 19 as well. She's starting to get her rhythm going. And then, you know, for Moe, unfortunately, um, you know, they had really great support from scoring from looks of all with uh, Caitlin Denzik with 13, uh, followed closely with Piper Albert with 12. Um, just, yeah, it just wasn't Moe's uh, night. They had a really strong second half, um, but that first, uh, you know, first two quarters really hurt them in the end. And Packham really showed uh, a defensive outing against the Southern Peninsula Sharks, holding them to 37 points and walking away with the W. It was um, it was an expected result here by Packham. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, credit to the, the Sharks. They put up a fight in the first quarter and then just uh, unfortunately um, struggled to get anything going in the, the last three um you know, to to be held to 37 points, um, you know, just shows how fierce and, and high intensity Pakenham Warriors women were playing, um, you know, within that. But, you know, with that being said, Beth Quarter again with tw- with 20, she's really starting to get her rhythm going um, with everything. So far, the last couple of games, she's been pretty dominant. Um, and then Haley Letts again with, with 18 following closely behind her and she's been a solid contributor um, the whole season so far. But over at the Sharks, um, we had uh, Brianna Pierce with nine, um, followed closely with uh, Shaley Higgins with six. And we just take a quick look at the ladder and Karen Barra had the week off, but able to hold their top spot with a 4-0 and record and closely followed by Terrell Wynn, who was sitting with a 4-1 and one. And then we moved to Pakenham and Mafra, who are both there, third and fourth with three and one records. Moe just sit outside the four at the moment with a three and two record, so playing that one extra game. And then we dropped to Wonthaggy, Warrigal and Sale, who are all sitting there on a very similar win percentage. Uh, and then lastly, we've got Mall, Southern Penn and Lake Centrance, three teams that haven't been able to knock up a win just yet, but their time will come and hopefully they can get one win on the board for this season. Yep, um, looks like the, it's going to be a, another situation like the men's, um, you know, where we've got three or four teams racing for those, you know, last two spots on the, the top four, um, you know. But with that being said, a lot of teams have played the majority of their games. Some haven't. Um, so I think we're in for, a, you know, a bit of an interesting end of the season. But look, same as the men, more well women, Southern Penn Sharks and... And the Pellies neither register their first win. So I'm sure they don't want to go the season not winning one. Um, so there's definitely something coming um, in the coming weeks. No one ever wants to go a season without winning. So make sure we stay tuned. That's our round three review for the Gippsland Conference. Um, look forward to jumping on a call later this week, Reese, to discuss and preview what will be round four in the Gippsland Conference. So uh, thank you to everyone and stay tuned.